Yeah? Okay, great, now it's on. So, hello everybody, my name is Verena Adani and I work for the Munich Public Transport Company. In German, it's München Verkehrsgesellschaft, which you can see in our logo here. So whenever I refer to MVG, I'm talking about our company. And today I wanna give you a little insight on the pricing strategy that we developed in Munich and how we can leverage this potential that we saw there with the factor of behavior pricing and selling. So first of all, I wanna give you a little introduction to our company. So here you can see our Metro and in 2019, which was obviously before Corona came into our lives, <laughs> we had more than 600 million passengers that used our mobility offers. And when I'm talking about mobility offer, I'm not only talking about the metro that you can see here, but we also, of course, offer buses and trams, but that's not it. We also have our own bike sharing system, which is called MVG Rad, and Rad is just the German word for bicycle. So you can use that, or you can also use our multimodal app that we just launched. It's called MVGO where you can also access different other multimodal services such as the scooters. We also support the city of Munich with electromobility. So you can see one of the stations where you can charge your car. And last but not least, we also provide innovative mobility concepts. So here in this little picture, you can see one big station in Munich and you can not only see the bus and the metro, but also the bicycles and yeah, they're not called drive now anymore, share now right now, but they are like parking lots where you can use one of the car sharing models. So I wanna give you a little outlook on what I'm gonna talk about in the next 15 minutes. So I wanna give you a little background. So the question may arise, yeah, why is a pricing strategy even necessary for a transportation company? Afterwards, I wanna tell you about how we approach this and how we got there. A little hint on what we implemented and how we did that. And in the end, I wanna give you a little outlook on what is gonna happen next. So, as I already said, the question arises, yeah, why is a pricing strategy even necessary for transportation companies? And to answer this question, we really have to have a closer look on the background or the different, yeah, I would even say challenges we are facing. So first of all, we are not the only company providing public transport in Munich, so there are various others, and we are working in a conjoined association. So this is one factor, we are not the only ones, and also many of the prices that were determined in the last couple of years were primarily driven by politicians, so we were not the ones to make the decision. That's the first factor. The next one is that we saw that our customers do have different requirements. So due to digitalization or also, of course, due to COVID, we saw that our customers really want different things and that we have to adjust our offers to those wishes and needs. Another thing is the market development. So in the recent years, many other yeah, mobility providers came into the market in Munich. For example, the scooter sharers, they were not there before, and they offer yeah, different pricing models and subscription models, which are of course attractive for the customers. And we really see that the customer has more options now and often these options lead to the fact that they're not choosing the public transport anymore, but they have better options with yeah, more attractive pricing from their point of view. And last but not least, in Germany, we had the ticket that only cost nine euros to use for whole Germany. And of course, the corona crisis, we really saw that those crises affected us because we didn't have the customers in our vehicles anymore. So we really had to focus on other funding options. And that is more or less the core message of this slide that we have to have a look on this consumer funding and yeah, still keep it. So having said that, we have to have a closer look 
on the pricing itself. So as I said before, we are not the ones to determine the price. So we have different, yeah, complex situations that we have to face. The first one is the economic leverage. So we really know from yeah, our studies or our backgrounds that the price is really a factor that is important for the success of a company. So especially for us as the public transport sector is a volume market and we also know that if we implement the price very poorly, we will lose profits. So this is the first lever that we say, okay, we have this economic thing in mind. Next up, I think I already said that, the field of tension between politics and entrepreneurship. So on the one hand, we as a company do have our objectives, but of course also the politicians do. So in Munich, every price measure that we had in the recent years was always carried out in the spotlight of the public. So everyone wanted to discuss something or tell us something that the price is not good enough or it's too high. So we really have to keep that in mind. So we're not the ones, as I said, <laughs> the economic point of view to, yes, tell the price. And also, having said that we are operating in the volume market, the price really has an impact on the demand volume, which we really saw with the nine euro ticket, our trains were full on the weekends. And last but not least, also back to the user funding, we really do think that this is a component of the transformation of transportation. And when I say transformation of transportation, I mean that we want to strengthen the public sector and yeah, make more people use our mobility offers, also strengthen the bicycle and of course reduce emissions and help people to leave their cars at home. So the core message of this slide should be that we still need this consumer funding. So we need the money from the consumers using our services, but also we have to think about new ways of getting the money in. So we have to combine the money we get from our customers and also the public funding that we get in order to provide an attractive service for our customers and also to further develop and of course maintain our very cost intensive system. So how did we reach this goal or what did we do? So until now, we really thought of pricing strategy as price level. But as I mentioned before, this is not really true because we are not the ones to decide the price. So we have to find other ways to increase revenues and yeah, have a look on what else we can do. So we got together with some consultants that, yeah, first of all, made us question our image of the customer. So what you can see here is Mr. Spock, which we thought, yeah, he's our customer, which we called Hoko Economicus. So he's purely selfish, he perfectly knows the price, he has stable preferences, he takes the best value for money, and most importantly, he has the absolute maximum willingness to pay. But we really had to question this, and we did, and we found out, okay, this is not really our customer. So we are more or less talking about this guy here that you probably all know, because all of the decisions that you make in your daily life, whatever, are not predictable, so they are irrational. So you have different price motives, you do not perfectly know the price, you have relative price acceptances, also you change your preferences, and the core message is that our customer doesn't want to decide anything, but also he doesn't want to be ripped off. So best case, you take the decision away from your customer and yeah, make him decisive. So now, when we talk about price strategy at our company, we do take more yeah, perspectives into account. First of all, we really see our customer in the middle and we try to take his perspective. And of course, the price level is still important due to all the factors that I mentioned before. But also, we have to tell him about price dynamics, the price structure, and one of the most important factors is the price communication. So how do we get our price that we determine together with the politics towards our customer? 
So now the question may arise, how do we implement that within our company? So at M4G, I'm part of our pricing team, and yeah, our goal is to yeah, take the, all of our colleagues with us and yeah, face those pricing challenges together. So one of the main topics is the further development of our current tariff that we're all applying with all the other public companies or public transport companies in Munich. Uh, then, of course, we want to further develop our bike sharing and all other services that we currently have or are thinking about. Um, another important factor are the analog and digital touch points that we have. We also want to design them with all the knowledge that we have from this pricing strategy and behavioral economics. Um, of course, when we talk about the price communication, it's important to have a look on how we communicate towards our customer and yeah, support our colleagues whenever they do new campaigns on how they should yeah, um, communicate the price. And one other very important factor is the communication towards politics. So we also went to the city and yeah, told them about all the findings that we had. And to be honest, they were quite happy to hear about it because of course, if the money comes from the consumer, they do not have to give us more of it. So what we offer as a pricing team within our company is that first of all, we want to transfer the knowledge that we have. So I think I could stand here for three hours and tell you so many things that we found out and our market research and yeah, all the projects that we did. Uh, we really see ourselves as a sparing partner so all of our colleagues could just come by and yeah, we want to develop concepts with them together and discuss. We're not the ones to tell them you have to do it like that. We really want to yeah, do that together. And what we're doing now is that we did various pricing workshops with our colleagues and we also support through pricing market research, for example, for our bike sharing system. So what's next? As I said, we also want to have a deeper look on our regular tariff or the tariff that we're having right now. As we saw that the whole work environment changed due to COVID, I think all of us can work from home or even from anywhere. So we saw that our current tariff offers do not really yeah, address the customer's needs. So we decided with all the other transportation companies together that we want to test a concrete tariff concept in, within a market research study. We already agreed on what we want to test, but unfortunately politi politics came in again and they are still deciding on a follow-up solution for the nine euro ticket. So we're kind of on hold with this project because we really have to wait what they are gonna do with the so-called Deutschland ticket, which will be accessible for whole Germany again. But I still wanna tell you what we're planning to do. So our target group are regular users with at least six journeys within our yeah, tariff association per month. So that is our definition of a regular user. We really want to address private customers and job ticket users as students and elderly people already have different tariff options. Our objectives are to yeah, give higher customer satisfaction to our customers, make them more loyal. We, of course, do not want to lose money, so best case, we even earn more. And we really want to check if the things that we are thinking about are really addressing the customer's needs and if there's even a potential for this new tariff offer or if we're just confusing the customer with more options. And the concepts that we're going to test is on the one hand, our differentiated subscription model. In Munich, we call it Card, And as I mentioned before, a flexible tariff product for all of the home office users. And yeah, just test the fair components that we are already having in our system. So I have 30 seconds left. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any further questions or want to know more about our pricing strategy, please let me know. Just one, one yes. quick question. Sure. Probably, probably don't have time for the mic to move around the room. How, how is the nine euro ticket affecting you um, and your annual revenue? Are you able to say? 
I mean, a lot. So it's a different um, yeah, part of our company that is dealing with that. But I mean, it's obvious that the state paid for it. So that we really have to keep in mind. But our fear is that, yeah, one day politicians are not so much into public transport anymore and they forget about us, they have other topics. So, yeah, it had a big impact, but I cannot tell you numbers, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, 